Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, uh, episode 344. Uh, each week uh, we uh, meet here to answer the questions asked on the, uh, SEO, the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight we have uh, um, Micah Fisher-Kirshner. Micah uh, is... Um, uh, director of uh, SEO for Turn River Capital in, in the United States, uh, not too far from uh, Silicon Valley. He's also uh, the head of the San Francisco Bay Area Meetup, SEO Meetup Group. I probably got that wrong. I hope, hope not. Um, we got it right. Ah, cool. Thank you. Um, and um, uh, actually, I, I saw some Laura Mipsum on, on a... Uh, anyway, I'll, 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 I'll speak to you later. Um, uh, well, you could also say I'm, I'll be speaking in D.C. in like two weeks as well. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Well, so we have um, Tim Kappa. Tim is uh, CEO of OnlineOwnership.com. Um, he's based in Corby, about 100 miles north of uh, London. Um, and, uh, Tim is also a Google product expert uh, in the uh, Google My Business community. Masataki Wasa is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Um, he's a, um, also a, a Google product expert in the AdSense uh, community. He's based in Wimbledon, a suburb of London. And um, uh, let me think. Da David Rosam is a leading internet marketer. Uh, he's based on, on the southern side of the UK uh, um, in West Sussex. Um, you can find David at um, um, Shemolian Marketing dot com and davidrosam.com uh, Richard Hearn is um, a CEO of uh, Red, Red you can find him at redcardinal.ie Richard deals in uh, higher echelon websites um, sites with a million pages or more uh, and so on and uh, as I said you can find Richard at, at redcardinal Dot IE. Have I covered everybody? Oh, D Donnie Stromf is with us tonight uh, um, for the first time. Donnie is, is showing us a new tool um, called bizswipe.com. Um, All right. Uh, well, you can look at it at bizswipe.com um, and uh, we'll be um, uh, test driving it this week and uh, um, we'll be talking about it this time next week. Um, did I cover everybody? I hope so. All right, so, so we've got 10 questions tonight. So let's um, have a look at the um, first one. It's from Mark X Quadras. Quadras. Um, it's titled Restructuring a Terrible Page Hierarchy. Uh, Mark said, my client has resources, comma, resources new and a blog page that are all serving the same purpose of displaying blog posts. I'd like to delete the blog page as it has a terrible hierarchy as opposed to the resources page, but what would the effect be on traffic? If I delete the blog page and keep the resources page, or two, if I delete the resources new page and just keep the resources page. I'm not sure if I follow that. 90% of their traffic is just to one article, which isn't really a keyword that's important to them. So I'm not afraid of losing traffic, but just trying to understand this. Um, Postscript, I, I checked using Google Search Console. Um, they had no indexed their category pages and have no traffic to these pages, oddly enough. All right.
Let's point out people like Michael Martinez, uh, um, who uh, answer questions, Pe people that uh, um, keep an eye on our Facebook group and answer questions as they appear throughout the week. The, the input is um, immense and valuable. Michael said that normally, but in this case, the duplicate indexes might be helping more than hindering. Uh, you only find out if you make a substantial change one way or, or another, and it could take months for any changes to impact the site's search referral traffic. Without looking at the blog or knowing the company's business objectives, uh, we can't really suggest a, a, traffic, a strategy. And I think that'll hold true for um the group of us here just one thing to mention he says that they now index their category pages that might not be helping him just to let him know yes true that's absolutely true um yes i, I, I the, the, we should put a sign on the wall here somewhere you know um don't uh, no index uh, uh anything internal um just another thing that's puzzling me. 90% um, of the traffic is just to one article, which isn't really a keyword that's important to them. So I'm not afraid of losing traffic. Is he saying that he's prepared to lose 90% of traffic? I presume he's saying that the 90% of the traffic is going to a page that isn't one of these that he's thinking of changing. Wouldn't he just make that page that's getting all that traffic support a page that like the home page, for example, support a page that is probably targeting keyword. Wouldn't that be more logical? I think his issue here is that he wants to decide whether he's going to keep what is a resources page or an archive page. And it sounds like the resources page is probably showing the, the same content as is on the archive page. So I think that the 90% the of traffic going to one article is just a, an aside. I don't think it's central to what he's asking about. Um, but yeah, you know, you, you can't tell by what he says, just like Michael Martinez says, you cannot say without looking at it with him, you know, in some detail. So uh, it depends. It depends. <laughs> okay. Um, let, let's um, move on to question two on our run list. Uh, it's titled Setting Up Your Homepage URL from Shao Chi Lo. Um, and uh, he goes on to, to say, uh, is it actually a problem to set your homepage on a URL uh, other than www.domain.com? If you guys can understand that, I don't understand. You know what it is? This one, I, I, I looked at this before. He's this guy is conflating two different issues. He seems to be mixing up the idea of having your home page on a, a different URL than you know on the root of the domain versus what he's read in an article, which is saying it's not a good practice to have your home home page available on multiple URLs. So I think what the problem here is he he has conflated these two issues. And um, it's not quite clear in his in his question what he's asking you there. Like it doesn't matter where your homepage is as long as it's only on one URL. It's basically the answer to his question, probably. Yeah, although I would qualify that last part saying is that if you've changed it over time, um, you may run into the issue of kind of people get, having been used to just linking to the top level. So if you're you're changing it to a you know a, a slash home. Uh, slash language slash home or something like that, you could potentially reduce the the links that are actually coming into your site if not careful about that. Oh yeah, well I always say you'd redirect. You'd set up a redirect, but you'd still lose some maybe. But yeah. I you know that this guy is asking like about a setup rather than a change maybe. But who knows? Yeah. But I'd say he's probably overthinking things. I don't think he needs to worry too much. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Richard, and thank you, Micah. 
All right, let's move on to number three on our run list. It is um, from Chris uh, Anna, um, and it's titled SEO that will actually deliver results. I'm fairly sure all SEO delivers results, doesn't it? Uh, anyway, uh, Chris said, hello, guys. Uh, I've recently been trying to get some keyword ranking SEO work done. I've hired three SEO experts um, so far who have completely failed to deliver what they promised. Um, it is burning a hole through my pocket at this point. Um, not sure where to turn um, at this point. Um, uh, dear. The page I'm trying to rank is an Amazon product page, if you're wondering. Uh, it should be easier and faster to rank than a normal new website. Um, does anyone have any good recommendations on where you can uh, get um, Google keyword ranking SEO that will actually deliver results? Thanks. So, um... Yeah, I mean, I posted a, a link in there on some basic things to do with optimizing uh, an Amazon product page. Um, and I know there are some specific products out there now that actually just uh, offer, you know, metrics on um, Amazon itself. Um, but apart from that, yeah, um, I'm not really sure where you would uh, sort of look at. Thank you, Tim. Uh, anybody else? Uh, I would think some pointing some backlinks at that page would help it, um, but it depends on the competitiveness of the page and, and the keyword you're trying to rank for. Um, if you're trying to rank for water bottles or something very broad like that, um, you know, it's not going to be easy to rank. You really, you need to see what's on the SERP in order to make a full analysis of how competitive it is and how much money you're going to have to throw at it. Um, if you're looking at ranking for something like water bottles, per se, even if it's an Amazon page that has a lot of trust and authority, domain authority, um, you're going to have to throw a ton of money at it in order to, to get any kind of... Uh, movement um if people have been on there for a very long time and they're you know delivering a good um they're delivering or they're they have good product and good user experience and they have authority and trust moving them out of the way isn't going to be that easy the only way to really do it is you know by having some solid backlinks pointing directly to your page um which you know is a tedious process but that that is something that would help um in my in my experience uh, but yeah other than that it's really hard to tell without knowing what the actual keywords are that you're trying to rank for thank you donny anybody else do you know there's one other thing that might be a factor here as well is whether the product is unique or generic and there's other people selling the same product on amazon so we don't know that from what he says i mean it, it could be a product that there's hundreds of sellers on Amazon. So he may be competing with who knows what content also. So there's too many uh, variables that are unknown here, I think, for anyone to really give him much information. But hopefully he'll learn from his experience with the three guys that he's obviously spent his money with and got nothing from. And maybe he needs to consider, you know, setting some expectations with whoever he works with in future to make sure that he knows what he's going to get, and they know what they're going to get paid for. Yep. All right, so let's move on from that one. And we're back for, with another question from Shay Chi Lo. Um, it's titled, 301 only passes 100% page rank um, when, it's, when it is close, close match. 
Um, I think this relates to a, um, a Twitter um, post from um, John Mueller. Um, it, it's Shay Chi Lo goes on to say 301 redirect informational page to transactional page. Will it pass linked use? He said, I recently found that informational pages on my website ranked for a lot of keywords. Um, I want to. I want it to be ranked for product pages. Um, a lot of keywords I want to be ranked for product pages. I was thinking about redirecting um, an informational page to product pages so that uh, it can uh, pass um, uh, link juice. Um, However, John Mueller, John Mew said that 301 only passes 100% um, page rank when it's close match. Uh, I wonder, say I have a page talking about ginger syrup and, and I redirect the page to ginger syrup purchase pages, uh, is this considered close match? I know the intent is, is kind of different, but they are all ginger syrup. Um, on the uh, subject matter point of view. Also, did John imply that 301 is an all or nothing thing? So if a page is not close match, it not only can't pass, pass a 100% PR, but no PR at all. Um, does anyone redirect a page of different intent but similar topics before or have any thoughts about it? Um, let me know your thoughts or experience on this. Thanks. If it's not broken, don't fix it. Um, if the page is already generating traffic, it could be from hundreds of different keywords. So moving it to something specific like a product might actually tank your rankings. And it's not a risk that you should be willing to take. Instead of doing it like that, why don't you take the product and add it to that page? Yeah, there's a lot of there's there's a lot of good ways to kind of <clears throat> think about how you want to handle this. Um, so, first, without having to actually redirect, one is kind of what what Donnie is saying. You can do some you know actual SEO testing if you want to you know, add on some kind of product style uh, layouts uh, and just tweak the page up itself uh, rather than redirect over to a, a, an actual. Um, product page. However, the other thing to note with that is the type of terms you're wanting to overwrite um, with a, a more product style layout. So if the phrase that you're ranking for that you're caring about is all informational, then switching over to a product side is probably going to tank your rankings just because of what users are expecting uh, for the set queries that you care about. Um, so that's something that to, to keep in mind. Uh, secondly, if your concern is just passing along value, then just link to your product page. That will help. Um, redirect just sends everything over, but you lose essentially all the value of what that page kind of had in the first place. Uh, so that's generally kind of the ways I would be looking at that. Um, in terms of the actual through one redirect, I mean, you're, you're playing a little bit with fire, um, you know, there's been talks back and forth of, of a variety of things where even uh, going from non-secured to secured can be harmful to a site if not done properly and sometimes not all the value is passed through even though they might say it is. So, you know, uh, you've got something that's ranking. Um, don't, don't, uh, don't ruin a good thing. So that's basically done it saying there. Uh, see what other additional values you can create can you get another secondary page to show up that's your product can you you know highlight that a little bit more prominently so users can jump over if they're actually really interested in it um full-on swapping is is more likely gonna uh lead to you not ranking anymore than it is uh, anything else thank you micah anybody else Just point out the, the, the messages from um, 
um, Michael Martinez and um, Roger Monty um, um, through um, the week. Um, and um, yeah, who else? Um, yeah, and Richard Hearn. Thank you, Richard. Only, only a little bit, but it's great to see Roger Monty in there. Like he has a huge wealth of knowledge, I think, as well. And Michael Martinez. I mean, it's it's great to have people who are, you know, obviously very well versed in this stuff, answering some of these questions. Yep. It is great. All right, um, let's move on to the next. This one, uh, number five on our run list from JL Favario. It's titled From Drupal to WordPress. Um, and JL Favario wants to know, can moving a large site from Drupal to WordPress um, brackets uh, using the same domain and URL structure and hosting affect the CEO, SEO rankings? Well, since I'm already uh, the first comment on that one. Yeah, absolutely. There are other things to consider. Uh, any, anything and everything around images. URLs, size, quality, etc. Um, that that can be effective, uh, affected if not properly pushed over. Um, anything in the HTML in the actual source, so HTML script, look like order of stuff, the confusingness of it to a bot, uh, to to just poor load times as a result can actually play an impact uh, beyond just keeping the URL the exact same. Um, you know, if any other design architecture changes uh, play a part, that can be, in, you know, impacted. Any new randomly created new pages through the, the Drupal setup can be a problem. Um, so that's definitely something to be mindful of. Doesn't mean you shouldn't, because uh, personally, I would not be wanting to keep the thing on Drupal in the long run, but um, just, yeah, keep keep an eye on it whenever you're doing a CMS change. I think you have to bear in mind also that Drupal and WordPress are sort of, they're quite different systems. One is a very generic CMS, and the other one is, is really based around a blog. Okay, WordPress is used for many things, but the taxonomy the basic taxonomy they both use will be quite different. So you could end up with a lot of stuff that you wouldn't expect just due to the fact that it's on WordPress. The other thing you want to be careful of is things like, you know, the head of the HTML, that WordPress might be doing different things there, things like canonicals, uh, various links that may go in just out of the fact that it's WordPress. So, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't fancy a big migration from, from one to the other. I, I'd say that yeah, you'd want to make sure that you're using crawlers and doing active crawls of the, the pre-migration and post-migration and compare, comparing to make sure that the actual URL structure is more or less the same. Yeah, just use Screaming Frog and export all the data that you have right now. And then when you migrate to the new site, run that same Screaming Frog and then look at both your spreadsheets. Um, and you can easily identify anything there that's missing and, um, you know, create redirects based on, on what you had and what you don't have now. Something that I like to do is create a backup of the site I'm going to be merging from to a new website. Um, I'll put it on a subdomain, and then once I create the new website, I'm able to go back and recrawl and see what was on those pages. And a lot of times these pages that you're moving from to the new site have no value anyway. You could just let them 404 um, and, and, you know, keep more value on the pages that actually matter to the user and, and, and to you. Um, and, and that right there will, you know, help ensure that you're not dropping the ball anywhere. Thank you, Donnie. All right, uh, let's um, move on to number six on our run list from Neil Cheeseman. Um, it's titled, What Can Cause a 410 Error on a Live URL? Actually, I think we'll skip this one because it, it's um, 
self-explanatory it's in, in fairly lightweight um he did actually find that uh, when he republished the page uh, um it, it suddenly uh, appeared back on wordpress um, problem solved okay let's um, go to the next number seven on our run list it's from abshishak uh, shetty uh changing the business location in um uh, Google My Business. Um, Ab, she's, Ab, his, his check, Ab, Ab his check, um, said, hello, guys. My client has changed her work location. Uh, is it safe to update slash change the location in Google My Business now? Um, will Google ban her account for doing that? No, that's uh, the way it's intended to work. So if you change, you know, if you move your location, uh, once you've moved, um, then go log into your GMB dashboard and update the location together with the pin marker. Um, depending, on, depending on how far this has changed, um, they may ask you to re-verify the location. But um, if you do some work before this, um, essentially, you know, you know ahead of time that you're moving, um, your GMB can only be changed once you've actually moved or physically into that location. But, you know, nine times out of 10, you, you, you know, you, you have, um, you know, you have pre-warning. Um, I would work your way through your citations, update citations with your address, make sure your website too many people forget this they don't update the actual address in the, on their on their on their website or where they've moved to or when they're moving to you know even pop on a blog post you know hey we've moved um just just to just to make sure you can even chuck that in a post into your gmb um, um but yeah you know so the day you move update it uh, nine times out of ten if it's not too far, you know, a couple of blocks uh, or within the same city, it shouldn't be an issue with having to re-verify. But if you literally move across the state, they are probably going to say, yeah, you know, can you re-verify this? But even then, it's not really an issue. Um, if the account's in good standing, they'll probably just allow a email or phone verification. If not, um, you know, post a couple of days. Um, so not really an issue. And whilst that's pending, um, your original your original listing is still going to be live anyway. So uh, yeah, go for it. It's it's not an issue. Yeah, I've actually migrated or changed the address for one of my clients and a, a while ago, and it was a very competitive industry. Um, personal injury attorney and he was ranking phenomenally and i changed the address and it didn't it got verified instantly and his rankings didn't move before before i even had a chance to fix all the citations and the address on the website schema markup days right um before i even had a chance to fix anything he it didn't it's like a it didn't even change a thing he was still ranking dominating for all of his keywords and it was before we even made any of the other changes that we made later on so yeah yeah um, yeah, GMB is yeah, GMB is pretty slow. Um, you know, they work off a completely separate algo. Um, very, very slow uh, with movements. You know, you can literally take it from a local business to a service area business, and you just you won't see anything happening for a couple of weeks at a time. Uh, it's separate algos, um, but um, in terms of the actual internal at the back end. Yeah, it, it won't be an issue. Um, that's what you meant to do when you update it. So, but you know, I, I mentioned the citations of that because those are the things you don't want to forget because ultimately both algos catch up with each other and then you can start confusing them. Right, but it's safe and I agree. Yeah, 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 totally. Okay, let's th thank thank you, Donny. Thank you, Tim. Um, let's uh, move on. And I hope uh, that Ab Abhishek uh, 
um, forgives me for mis mispronouncing his name. Um, and also, I, I thank Ahmed Kumar Singh uh, for his uh, contribution in answering this question as well. Um, let's move on to the next. Um, it's number eight on our run list. It's from Saurabh Rawat. Um, it's titled Internal Links with the Same uh, Anchor Text. He said, suppose I have a total of 50 pages in the website and uh, slash page hyphen one has internal links in 10 pages um, with the same anchor text. Um, if I add slash page hyphen one link to the rest of the 40 pages with the same anchor, um, will it help in ranking or um, in short, link juice still works for internal links? I guess nobody wants to be uh, okay. part of the debate. All right, so if you're going to li link to 50 different pages in your site with the same anchor text, I I'm not sure if I'm understanding the question, but if you link with the same anchor text to different pages in your site, you're spreading the information of your you're, – you're not focusing on one page. as the page that you're trying to rank for that, page, for that keyword. Essentially, with SEO, you want to pick one page um, that you want to rank for a service um, and then – you know, put all your eggs for that for that keyword or the the set of keywords um, in that on that page. Um, so if you're if you're targeting, uh, you know, uh, let's say car wash, um, it's a car wash business. The home page would target car wash. All the internal pages can support that one page. But if you're taking the internal pages and linking them to different pages, saying car wash, car wash, car wash, car wash. Google is unable to know, um, you know, the, and the user doesn't know which page you're trying to send them to. Uh, so it's better to always have one page targeting your main keywords and then supporting pages linking to it that can be relevant, can be um, not relevant, um, but in general, they, they support that page. Um, I, I think that's kind of what he was asking. I'm not 100% oh, sure. sure. I think he's saying if he has one, let's just say he has a money page on his site. I don't like using that phrase, but he has a money page on his site and it's linked to from 10 pages on his site. Will the money page rank better if he links to it with the same anchor text from all 50 pages from his site? And the answer is it depends. Yeah, I, would, I wouldn't risk it if it's working. You know, don't don't mess with it. Um, I, would, I would recommend, you know, obviously creating more supporting pages and linking to it and then getting external pages, uh, external websites to link to those pages that are supporting it and that page where it makes sense. Um, but, but that will move the internal links don't have as much value as, as external links. If, if I'm not sure if that's the question either, but it depends is always the best answer, right? Excellent. Thank you, Donnie. That mention from Michael Martinez there about don't use no follow is probably a, a good bit of advice for the, the the person who posed the question. Yeah, it certainly it, well, that was Sora uh, Rowett. Um, yeah. All right, let's um, move on uh, to number nine on our run list from Sahin Trump Mater. Uh, he wants to know how do I optimize content for um, search engine optimization in 2019? Uh, Sahim said, I'm a content writer. How do I optimize content for SEO in 2019? See Brendan Michelin and uh, Cameron Taylor. Uh, I actually, uh, Cameron Taylor said, identify keywords, write content, test, measure, test again, measure, refine process over time. Love it. I would recognize kind of the type of. I'd say more and more if we the results are looking, 
is understand um, the result layout, the resulting layout of what Google has, so that if there's a whole variety of different kind of content on the results, then whatever you're putting together for your, let's say, a blog post, um, is then to make sure that you are reflecting the likelihood of what you can potentially get in that result. So if it's filled with regular results, video, uh, featured snippet, or knowledge graph, et cetera, then making sure that your page is as comprehensive, uh, kind of capturing that will probably be one of the more effective ways to make see if you can at least get one of those various things in a result uh, versus potentially say in the past, which was just pure optimization of con of pure written content and just more of the standard 10 blue organic links. Uh, look at that, see, basically be a little more comprehensive in thinking of what shows up so that you're covering the greatest likelihood of showing up. Thank you, Micah. All right. Have we, uh have we mentioned understanding uh, the the searchers, the customers, um, and their needs, and understanding what they should be looking for? Um, yeah, but that's like 2015. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's, still, it's, still it still applies. Um, we're talking about all this stuff on the uh, on the page, so I just thought that I'd, I'd kind of spread it out a bit. But yeah, okay, I stand corrected. <laughs> oh, I'm just messing. Go, feel free. Go ahead. Highlight, highlight what all the, some of that as well. I'm, yeah, I'm continuing in the same in the in the same vein. <clears throat> okay, done. Okay, let's move on to number ten. Now, last question on our run list from Arslan, but um, he said, my uh, website is not searchable on Google. Oh. Um, he said, our website, www.imi.com.kg, uh, is not searchable on Google. Can anyone check and tell me what to do? Thanks. Let me have a look. Well, it's true, it doesn't come up in a site using the site operator. Um, no, no documents. Wants to play, um, play something. It's from Courage. I don't know how, how to pronounce that, Kyrgyzstan or something. Kyrgyzstan. Kyrgyzstan, thank you, Micah. The first thing is that his site is not dub dub dub, it's imi.com.kg. So you need to do a site search without the dub 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 and you'll see a site there. So if you try to go to that dub 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 or it'll redirect to the non dub 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 and then do a side search and all his pages are there. International Medical Institute. He just uh, he just did the wrong thing, I think. Yeah. I agree. I, I can or not agree, I can confirm. <laughs> Same thing. They got the um, dub 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 and it works. The I think there might be an issue with the, uh, um, uh, what, um, the, sorry, I was, I just put it through a uh, curl and it's upgrading the connection to H2. And I'm not so sure that would work 
uh, for non-HTTPS. It will show up on browsers, but I think there, there may be issues with bots if it's not HTTP 1.1. Yeah, good catch. Thank you, Matt Massa. Um, okay. Um, I, I guess uh, for Aslan, if you could um, give him a link on, on the question itself, um, um, it might make it easier for him to understand uh, um, what, what, what's going on there. All right, um, I think um, if I click this button, um, it's um, thank you for watching time again. So we've done it again. We've, we've answered uh, all of the questions asked on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group um, for another week. We'll be back uh, at the same time uh, uh, next week um, to do uh, this all again. Um, I should thank, before we go, uh, people like Michael Martinez, uh, uh, Roger Monty, um, Stockbridge Truslow, um, and I know I've missed a lot, and, of course, our panellists uh, tonight um, also uh, held up um, their end of the battle uh, uh, through the week um, on our uh, Facebook group. Um, the contributions of everybody is, is just immensely valuable. Um, and um, I, I'm, I'm certainly grateful. Um, okay, um, let's um, look at... Um, uh, oh, yes. Um, so before we close, I just wanted to thank Tim Kappa, um, David Rosam, Mike Fisher Kirshner, Masataki Wasa, um, Donnie Strump, um, who did I miss? Um, uh, I've missed somebody, damn it. Who did I miss then? Yourself. Oh, apart from me. Anyway, uh, as I said, we'll be back at the same time uh, next week. Um, but until then, um, Thank you very much.